always has something coming up here April 4th, which is the anniversary, I think 50 years, mm -hmm. of the assassination of Martha Luther King. Yes. Tell us a little bit, what, what is the name of this event? When is it going to happen? The event is going to be on April 4th at Dr. Robert B. Haling Freedom Park, which is the southernmost part of uh, Riberia Street in Lincolnville, and it'll be at 11 o'clock. It's a public dedication of Compassionate St. Augustine's Let Freedom Ring Chimes Project, which is a major public art installation in our city. Uh, you may remember that uh, we are the organization that did the Obelisk Project yeah, that was amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. throughout the city. Yes. And uh, like all of our uh, initiatives, this also had a component that uh, was involving children who come from underserved uh, families in the community and that type of thing. The project is uh, to some extent, the first officially approved uh, public art, permanent public art installation in the city's oh, history. Wow. And uh, the city commissioners approved the project uh, in July of 2016, once we had some plans for it. Right. Um, the Obelisk Project was the first temporary public art project that had right. been approved by the city commission. Mm -hmm. And they're still around, I see them in yes. places. Yes, there uh, are quite a few. Always a big and smile when I see <laughs> Whenever we can catch up, we'll get a map so uh -huh. that people can take a walking tour right, of the ones that right. are still on public property. You guys property. did have a map at the beginning. Right. That was probably, what, two years ago? Uh, going on three now. Yeah. Going on three. 2015. Oh, wow, yes. And, yes, uh, two and a half. Right. So here's my other question. Now, for this dedication, the meaning of the dedication is what? Well, the Let Freedom Ring uh, Chimes Project, as mm -hmm. it's known, is uh, basically a civil rights and African American storyline uh -huh. commemoration. And when I say civil rights and African American storyline, I'm talking about the local civil rights mm -hmm. and uh, African American storyline as it pertains to Lincolnville and then extends out into the community right. um, as well. And so uh, this project came together actually two years ago after what was known as Riberia Point, right. uh, the most beautiful view probably in the entire greater city area, mm -hmm. um, was rededicated as Dr. R.B. Haling Freedom right. Park for our local civil rights right. hero, right. who basically uh, was also known nationally as one of the fathers of the uh, civil rights movement. Now, now here's a question for mm -hmm. you. Um, why a chime? Why a chime? Because uh, this, this isn't a little chime you hang on the door. This, this no, thing is quite massive. These are 14 graduated contrabass aluminum chimes. Oh, and, wow. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, they're pentatonic, which means they're all in tune with each other. But they're not like the chimes that we many of us have hanging at right, our where homes. the wind activates them. And right. Uh, these will be struck by mallets that are connected to uh, the installation. They will be in an arc, uh, in a sense, if you're right at the point of Hailing Park, uh, the uh, 312 bridge would be in your back uh, background. Mm -hmm. And the other piece um, right down there of this is a 50-foot semicircular marble bench that has been sculpted by uh, artist Joe Siegel, who's oh, known he's amazing. locally, he's amazing. internationally, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, he actually lives in Lincolnville right. as mm -hmm. well. And uh, this is uh, really a phenomenal uh, feat, number one, to be able to uh, sculpt all of this marble and then transport it down to a place uh, so to heavy. be able to install. So Right, each, mm -hmm. uh, each block is over 200 pounds, so we're talking about tons and tons of marble. And um, the bench is called a reflection bench to sit on, uh, and it looks towards the chimes and out over the water. What's very exciting, uh, especially for Compassionate St. Augustine, is the fact that the top of the bench, the sitting area, is going to have uh, 50, maybe one, two, three, depending upon how they space out, 
granite tiles that have been designed by children from the Webster School uh, in what we call West Augustine, the Boys and Girls Club, and also the incarcerated youth at St. John's Youth Academy, which very many people do not know that that's actually located in St. Augustine. Right. And Compassionate St. Augustine has had extensive programming out there uh, with the boys who are incarcerated. And so uh, they have all designed these 12 by 12 granite tiles. The t tile came from a quarry in Indiana. Okay. And now they're up in Jacksonville at this point, and they will be installed, so they'll be right. finished. Mm -hmm. um, they're being sandblasted at a monument uh, company up there. So they'll be the same as like headstones and whatnot. Oh, wow. And uh, they will fill in that area between the two walls of the bench. The third component of this project is the Emancipation Proclamation obelisk that we had during the mm -hmm. 450th. Who's the one who made that one? Uh, it's an artist from uh, Alabama. His name is Johnny Moore. Okay. Uh, he's an African-American mm -hmm. artist and interestingly uh, the obelisk uh, was named Her Story. Ah. And uh, it's a very intriguing and interesting mm -hmm piece of art. So, so you have three parts of this. You have the chime, the bench, mm -hmm. and the obelisk. Right. And so we had the project um, basically approved in 2016 and even at that point in time uh, we were aware that the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King was on April 4th, 2018. Right. But we thought the project would move along a lot faster. But two hurricanes Oh, uh, yeah, really uh, set things back and I think all for the right reason. Uh, I mean we're uh, working furiously right now but uh, uh, it will be dedicated on April 4th. We're hoping lots... What time? At 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock at, at, at the... it's called now the Robert Haling Freedom Park. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're very excited about the project because uh, of two things. Uh, one, the fact that we have reached this point in its development, but it's an ongoing legacy project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's designed, uh, public art is different than monuments and statues. Right. Public art opens up an opportunity for people to agree to disagree mm -hmm. and talk about what it means to them, mm -hmm. whether they like it or they don't like it, whether they understand it mm -hmm. or they don't understand yeah, it. Yeah, and it can be intellectually interactive or even physically interactive in the sense of Exactly. The chimes on a mallet. Yeah. Exactly. And one of the things that we're going to be doing with this, and one of the reasons <clears throat> that we're still raising funds, is the fact that we are going to develop a curriculum that ties the Lincolnville uh, Museum and Cultural Center and the Chimes Project together. So that of the thousands of fourth grade Florida history students who come to uh, St. Augustine every year on their field trips, there will be a curriculum available to them that's based on civil rights mm -hmm. and based on the values of the Chimes Project. Mm -hmm. And the values of the Chimes Project echo the Obelisk Project. Uh, it's freedom, democracy, human rights, compassion, and added to that are tolerance and civility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the museum has all these wonderful exhibits because incredible they're place. really... Incredible. Things they were changing very mm -hmm. rapidly. Yes. The evolution of that place. Is and amazing. then the children will have the opportunity to go down to the park mm -hmm. and talk about it more, um, more imaginatively, mm -hmm. to ring the chimes and discover what does it mean to let freedom mm -hmm. ring. Mm -hmm. We've always talked about this as being a, a sustainable leg legacy project, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that children do not study that piece of local history. Uh, in the schools, uh, other than a passing note or something right. like that, uh, means that it's at risk of being lost to future generations. And we know that if young children in a uh, supervised way can be able to experience this and learn from it through a curriculum and through teachers and mentors and parents who are familiar with the story, then the story will live on. And this project uh, is not going to go anywhere. Hopefully, we'll never have another hurricane. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when you've got tons and tons of marble and everything else. Uh -huh. yes. And uh, the other thing about it that really is a bit of a legacy 
is the three entities that came together as partners to make this project happen were uh, Compassionate St. Augustine, in a sense, took the lead, but Keep Riberia Point Green, the grassroots movement that was able to keep that uh, from being commercially developed mm. through a resolution with the city and uh, keep it as what's called a passive park. Um, and then our city, so the three entities right. that, in a sense, really spearheaded making this uh, come alive right. and enlivening this piece of history has been a remarkable experience for Compassionate St. Augustine. And we've just been so grateful for the opportunity to offer this as a gift. Well, I thank you for this interview. And uh, so it's April 4th, mm -hmm. 11 in the morning, mm -hmm. at the uh, Robert Haling Freedom Park, which, remember, it's at the end of Riberia, uh, going uh, south, and also Riberia's off King Street, and King Street's off US 1. So it's a easy <laughs> square here. Um, so I thank you very much, and uh, I'll be there. Uh, I'm all excited about this, too. So I, I thank you very much for your time. And thank you for the opportunity to be able to tell people about this.